All right, so we are into day seven. Day seven is camel cards. Your all expense paid trip that turns out to be a one way, five minute ride in an airship. It drops you off at an edge of a vast desert, descends back. Did you bring the parts? You aren't sure what parts. The parts, yes, for the sand, yes. Riding a bike. Journey will take a couple days. She offers to teach us the game of camel cards. Kind of like poker, except it's designed to be easier to play while riding a camel. You get a list of hands. Goal is to order them based on the strength of each hand. A hand consists of five cards labeled in the same way as typical cards. Ace, king, queen, jack, ten. <laughs> is that what the ace, king, queen, jack, ten? <laughs> Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. The relative strength of each card follows this order where A is the highest and two is the lowest. Every hand is exactly one type. From strongest to weakest, they are five, four, five of a kind, four of a kind, full house, three of a kind, two pair, one pair, high card. Hands are primarily ordered based on the type. For example, every full house is stronger than any three of a kind. If two hands have the same type, a second ordering rule takes place. So there's some rules for if they tie. These are both four of a kinds but threes and two are stronger because its first card is stronger. It looks like these are supposed to be in order. Is that true? Three, 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 two, and two A, 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 A are both four of a kind hands, but it seems to matter which the first card is. So I don't think we have to shuffle these in part one. So we get hands and their bids, five hands followed by their bid amounts. Each hand wins an amount equal to its bid multiplied by its rank. So the bid, multiplied by the hand ranks that we were given above. Oh no, not the hand ranks we were given above, the hand ranks between each other. So it's within this five, it looks like. Strongest has five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five multiplier. First step is to put the hands in order of strength. So it looks like we're going to have to define rules for determining what we have, then also some rules for multiplying the bids. So let's get started by pulling in the test input at least. And today we have an interesting addition to our create just script. We've got get input day. So let's see if this works. First of all, just create day seven, run this. And we should already have the inputs a little bit long, but sending to our input URL, then we get our input.txt. And if we look in day seven, input.txt is already filled. So our just command for create day clones our template. There's no blocker for if you don't have your session cookie set, but get input will run a Rust script that takes CLI arguments. That Rust script is built with cargo scripts, which is really cool. So we get to define our dependencies in here using cargo toml ish kind of syntax. You do have to use nightly, which is why it's cargo plus nightly at the top here. But otherwise we just use a regular shebang and then we can write a Rust program, which I've done here with a couple of dependencies. It's probably a little longer than it needs to be, but it does include error handling for passing in the wrong values, which is what I wanted out of it. So this uses a request and your session value. There's some instructions in the just file for how to get that and where to put it. And it just works. So that's fantastic. Love that that worked. In the meantime, let's get our test input set up. And this looks like an easy one today. We don't really need to do anything. We'll grab our input, we'll do lines today. We'll do map. Let's check the input to make sure that this is all correct. There's only a single space everywhere. Great. Map line, line dot split once space. We'll get a just work day seven part one going. Type annotations needed for the collect. This is going to be a vec of a string slice and what, a U32 probably? Then we'll do card and bid in here and we'll do card bid dot parse unwrap. And it's going to parse into a U32. The trait allocator is not implemented for U32. That means I did something wrong. Oh, that's because, okay, so the syntax here, vec, string slice, and then the number like this is actually set syntax. So the reason that that was showing up is I should have made this a tuple, a vec of tuples. But if you look at the definition for vec and the type arguments or the generics that it accepts, it actually does accept this A generic. So T is the type that we're storing in it. And A points to this thing called global. Global is the global memory allocator. So that's why that pops up. It's defaulted. We don't really mean that. We mean that we have a vec of tuples. So we're going to do that. Then we have our hands. We debug out the hands and we have hopefully, yeah, hands here. So we kind of need a function here for scoring the hands, right? So we need to figure out which one is which. And our options are five of a kind, four of a kind. So let's start off with maybe making enum. Enum sounds good today. So basically just brought in all of the names of things here. 
So this is going to be like hand type or something. I don't really know what to call this, so I'm using it. And we've got five of a kind, four of a kind, full house, three of a kind, two pair, one pair, high card. So I'm going to make this hand struct as well. And here I'll derive the bug on it. We need to bug, of course, on anything that we use below. So this enum, if you've never seen an enum before, it can only be one of these things. So it can only be a five of a kind or a four of a kind or a full house, etc. Now we can have kind of a tricky thing here. And I think this should work. We should be able to set the values here for each of these. It's kind of tricky because is this really what we mean by this? We're just using it as a type. So it's really just a label. So this is fine. And then we can just do as U8 and take advantage of everything that a U8 can do, you know, in terms of like sorting and figuring out which one is higher. Missed a, missed a K there. So we'll see more about those numbers later. But this is the ordering. Basically, a five of a kind beats everything and so on. And then we need to keep the first character around. And that will also, I believe, sort correctly. We need to translate T into 10. And we'll probably translate all the cards. So we could do the same thing, actually. It'll be a little verbose. Can we just translate these straight to numbers? Maybe. So the idea here is we can either treat these as an extension of the numbers, right? So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Or we can create a card enum and translate all the cards to this. I think what we have to do is keep the first one. We can identify five of a kind if we do a hash set. Well, not not necessarily a hash set or like a B-tree map where we count or something like that. Same thing for four of a kind. We'll have like a four and a one, right? Full house will be two and three. Three of a kind will be three, one, one. Two pair will be two, two, one. One pair will be two, one, one, one. And then high card will be one, 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 one. So that seems like the easiest way to determine these, which means that we don't actually need to keep them around. So let's chill on the enum for a second. Let's write a score hand that takes a string slice. I can think of doing something really silly, but I'm trying to think of a better way. If we do hand.cars, then I wonder if iter tools has something like a count distinct or a distinct. I know there's unique. I don't necessarily want just unique. There's a function that will give us duplicates. There's also counts by. Collect items in the iterator and return a hash map which contains each item that appears in the iterator and the number of times it appears. Yes, that is exactly what we wanted. So counts by is what it's going to be. Or I guess counts is probably enough. That does mean we need to bring in the iter tools trait because otherwise we can't access the functions on that trait. So now we get a hash map from car to u size and we can do counts dot values. I think we have to collect this to sort it, but iter tools also gives us dot sorted which is nice. So basically, normally to sort something, you have to collect it into some container. So to actually be able to do a sort on a VEC, for example, you have to be able to access that VEC and kind of build up the new one, or at least mutate the original one, which doesn't make it amenable to being sorted in line in an iterator because iterators just operate item by item. So what sorted will do for us is create that extra VEC that we need behind the scenes. And if we collect into a VEC, then we just get that VEC back and that gives us an iterator. So we can just collect this into a string, right? And this is gonna be very silly, but if we match on values here, then we'll get five for five of a kind. Uh, these are strings, yes. Four, one for four of a kind. Three, two for a full house. Three, one, one for three of a kind. Two, two, one for two pair. Two, one, one, one for one pair. And one, 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 one for high card. And this is very silly, I feel like. Did I accidentally duplicate hand type up here? I did. <laughs> Whoops. So expected capital. So this expects a reference to a capital S string, and we are matching on string slices. What we're going to do here is pull in standard ops deref, and then we're going to deref here. And because we deref, this will deref into a string slice. Because if we call deref, there's this thing called deref coercion which means if T implements deref to some target and some variable X is of that type T, then we don't care about this first one. Shared references to T are coerced into values of type shared reference to U. So in this case, we have a shared reference to a capital S string, and that'll be coerced into a shared reference of a STR. So that's why this works. Uh, I don't know why I collected that into a shared reference to a string over here. That is not the right thing to do. Value string cannot be built from U size. Values sorted. Now, as far as I know, there's no like display function or two string function that you can just call on the iterator to just to, to like two string things. But I just figured I would look anyway. And this is one of the ways that I discover things. So there, it doesn't always happen that there is a 
function for it. Here we go, format all iterator elements separated by separator. That's not what we want. That's for comma separated iterators. It's very close though. I guess join is what we want here. Sorted dot join, and that gives us a string. Yeah, okay, so that should be fine. Join is what we wanted here. So it always pays to be like, hey, I feel like there should be something here. I'm not sure what it's called. I have an iterator of stuff. Maybe I go look at the iterator docs. Maybe I go look at the iter tools docs. Now, should I have remembered that join existed? Yes, it just didn't sit in my head. And looking things up in a documentation page is what the documentation is for. So these are an issue because usually we would have to type hand type colon colon and then one of the variants, right? Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna be a little bit cheeky here. I'm gonna use hand type colon colon star. Now this is an issue because of the return type, but not because of what we just did. So let me to do this for a second so that we can talk about it. And we do have one more before we do that case to handle. So if there's anything else, which there won't be in our case, but there could be, we're gonna panic with should never, and we're gonna actually use this value in the message like this, just like format should never happen encountered this value. So here we have the case of something that should really never ever happen. We should have matched on everything successfully. And if this ever happens, something is wrong with our logic. So we panic here. Panic works much like format. So we can pass values in with the display formatter here, which is all great. Back to the enum. So you can use in various different places, right? So inside of this function scope, I've decided that I want to work with hand type using the values inside of the enum declaration. So I want to work with the variant names directly, and I don't want to keep typing hand type like this for every one of them. So what I can do is I can bring the variant names into scope and then use them. And this is why I try to talk about use as bringing names into scope rather than importing, because this isn't really an import in my mind. It's bringing the names inside of this hand type declaration. So the variant names into the scope of this function so that we can use them directly. And it's the same thing that's happening at the top, right? We're bringing in DREF from standard ops. We're bringing in iter tools from iter tools, et cetera, et cetera. So again, nothing wrong with calling these imports. A lot of people do, but that's why I always reference them as bringing things into scope rather than importing, because you can do that in multiple different places. So all of this together, we have the hand type. We also need the first character. So we'll call this hand type and we'll do first. So hand.cars.next.unwrap because we know that there has to be a character here if we haven't panicked already. If we didn't have a character, we would have panicked here already. So this unwrap is also fine. So we can do hand type in first. We do need to have that in our return type. So hand type and car. So this score hand should work for us now. We could write a test for this. I feel like the logic is pretty correct. So we'll go back and test if we feel like we need to. So we have the hands here and we have the bids. If I remember correctly, we need to sort these and then we need to multiply the bid by the position of the sorting. So if we have a card, we have a bid. Why did I name that card? That doesn't sound right. If we have a hand and we have a bid. Then let's tack on score hand with the hand here. And then we get back string slice, the U32, the hand type car. Should never happen, encountered 1112. Did I write these the wrong way? I think I write, I think I wrote these the wrong way. So it's gonna be 1423, 113, 122, 1112. So that should be fine. So are these correct is a question. One pair, so three, three, yep. Three of a kind, three fives, yep. Two pair, that looks good. Two pair, that looks good. Three of a kind looks good. All right, I think our test values are good. So now what we can do, because we're gonna need to sort these, is we can match on first for this value here, but I'm gonna do it right outside of that. So match first, that first num equals this, and then we need a bunch of numbers, but we really only need to match a couple of them. So we need to match ace, king, queen, jack, 10, and everything else we can pass through. So we've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, save, value as U8. This will be a U8, this will be a U8, and then we will have the number values here. So there's probably a sorted by in iter tools. Here we go, sorted by. I knew that we had sorted by because there's a lot of underscore by functions. So if we have sorted, we probably have sorted by because there's a lot of sorting can happen in many ways by many fields. So you wanna be able to customize those things. And usually when you wanna customize one of these functions, that is under sorted by or something like that. So this is A, B, or compare the two of them together. Is that the best we can do though? Sorted by key is even better, I believe, because we can just specify the value. So we do sorted by key here, 
and this is x.2.1 gives us the 12. Really unfortunate. We could structify this a little bit more and have fields to access here, but we're only doing it once, so I'm not too worried about it. So all that together, the sorted by key, sorted by key gives us an iterator, right? Yeah, into iterator. Why does that say 51? 10, 12, 13, 13, 51. Did I mistype a number? Oh, as U8 for the car. Yeah, okay. Because one pair is three. It's not as U8, it's two digit. And then we unwrap. And that makes everything a U32, which is also fine. I don't really care that much. Like, yes, the number can only be inside of a U th U8. Uh, it can only be a number from zero to 14, but I'm not too concerned about it right now. So three, 10, 12, 13, 13, that looks good to me. So we've scored the hands, we've sorted the hands. In this case, if we enumerate and we map over it, then what we get is index, hand, bid, hand type, and I'm just destructuring this all out. And this is what the score, high card score. I guess we don't need the high card score, do we? Thinking about it, because we need index plus one times bid. So we can actually get rid of all this stuff on the right, except for the fact that we need to ignore it. And then we've got U32s here and index is a U size. We'll just cast this down, that's mapped. I think we sum this, I'll check, double check. But this becomes a U32, so we get rid of that type signature at the top. And then we get hands to string. Hands is really no longer the best variable name for this. And let's see, left, empty string, right, 4794. We didn't pull in the test value here. So day seven, total winnings are this. Oh, you know what I didn't sort by? I didn't sort by the hand. We got to sort by the hand first, which I think is easy for us because we have hand type here. And where are we doing our sort? Sorted by key. And instead of just doing it by that, we're going to do it by a tuple here. X.2.0 should be our hand type. So let's see what the problem is there. Can't move out of shared reference. Hand type can't be dereferenced, which is, you know, fine. But this is just effectively a U8. So we can implement clone and copy. And that value should just copy. And we get 6440 and 6632. So 6632 is the wrong number. It's too high. Bid and rank. Did I sort it in the wrong order? Let's inspect this. We'll get our value here. We'll debug the value. And this will give us the ordering that we get. So we've got one pair in the first position. And I think we need it the other way. Because three of a kind beats one pair. So we're going the wrong order here. So if I sort it negatively, so <laughs> we sort the opposite way effectively, then we get three of a kind and zero, which should be plus one. That looks like the wrong bid. So it's one pair. Did I put the one pair in the wrong place? 765, one pair. Okay, rank one is the low one. So we did do our sorting in the right order, I think earlier. So one pair, two pair, two pair, three kind, three of a kind, one pair, two pair, three of a kind, three of a kind. Q, Q, Q is last. K, T, J is two. So this is our problem right here. K, T, J is supposed to be two and KK6 is supposed to be three. So the issue here is that, oh, it has to be done by each card. That's unfortunate. So we have to turn all of these into numbers. That's fine. We're gonna, we're still gonna cheat it out on our sort by just making a giant tuple, but the single character translation here has to happen for all of the cars. So hand cars, not next, but dot map card. And then we do this match and we'll collect that and I know that Inner Tools has collect tuple. So I think I'm gonna do that. Make it very clear that we have five elements here. We'll name this card scores. We'll put this here and we'll say card scores up here. It's not a U32, but it's one, two, three, four, five U32s. And we match on card, not first. And this is an option because theoretically it could fail, but it won't for us because we've done all these other checks. And that's me uh, passing the test and running our benchmarks with all our debugs in. So I'm gonna kill that for a second. I wonder if this benchmark actually put out seven. Running in three milliseconds, I'll take it for the slow end. 345 microseconds, it looks like. So if we just test, make sure that we have passed our test, then we run. As always with release mode, we get this number, which is smaller than the max of U32. So I'm not worried about it being an overflow. I am, however, concerned about it being wrong as always. So that was good. We got one gold star. That's part one. 
We'll continue to part two before doing a dive into that later. So to make things interesting, the elf introduces one additional rule. Now J cards are jokers, wild cards that can act like whatever card would make the hand the strongest type possible. To balance this, J cards are now the weakest individual cards. So our sorting changes, but everything else stays in the same order. J cards can pretend to be anything. I really hope that we only have one joker. No, we can have multiple jokers. So I think the way this works actually in my head is that if we have a number of jokers, then it can go up two ranks, right? So if this is one pair, or effectively this is two pair, and it has two jokers, so it's two pair and it has two jokers, it can actually be four of a kind, yikes. So let's get our code posted over. Part two, paste. The new test value is 5905. And I feel like there's one change that we need to make at least. It's this needs to go to one. So the joker is now lower than a two. Oh wait, yeah, J is a joker now, right? There's no Jack. So now this little <laughs> funky matching won't really work for us. Although it is only five. I could write all of these out for up to five jokers. What is the maximum number of jokers we have? J, 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 J. Five. <laughs> the maximum number of jokers we have is five. My big question, okay, so this, when it's a leading joker, I think that's worth one. So this would become five. So we can have up to five jokers. So we could just do the math here, or rather not the math, but the match. So hand.cars.counts. So if we have any J's, then we have a joker count. Otherwise, all of this other stuff still holds and everything works just fine. So we'll leave that logic. And I think we do need to keep some of this. So we'll pull this up. And then so if we only have four cards, right, then this is all of our possible hands. We can have four of a kind, three of a kind, two pair, one pair, or high card. And this gets progressively smaller, so we don't have four of a kind anymore. We can't have two pair with three cards, one pair and high card. Same for two cards, we can have one pair and we can have high card. For one card, we can only have high card. Now, I don't necessarily, I, I think we can match on this. So if we match hand type and the joker number as a tuple, then I guess we already have that here. So I'll leave those as comments and keep them around. So hand type will be like four of a kind and becomes, so four of a kind becomes five of a kind. And I'm just gonna document all of this as I do it. There's gotta be a better way. So if we have four of a kind, the only thing we can do with the extra card is become five of a kind, which beats four of a kind. If we're four of a kind and we have one extra card, no, if we're three of a kind and we have one extra card, we can be a full house or we can be four of a kind. So actually I think what's happening here is we just get to add to one of these numbers, right? If we're two pair and we have one extra card, we get to add to one of those numbers. So we add to the rightmost number until we hit five, right? Two pair with one card becomes three, two. One pair with one extra card becomes three, one, one. High card becomes two, one, 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 which is a thing. Three of a kind becomes five. One pair becomes four of a kind. High card becomes three, one, one. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we just add the jokers to the rightmost number. And then we match on that. Two cards plus three jokers is five. One one is four and one, which is four of a kind. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing. We aren't doing this. We just need to get the values without the joker if we have a joker. So let's do counts dot iter dot filter key value. We'll do a filter map here actually, because if we filter map, then um, key equals J, right? Oh, these are cars, so J as a car, and we dot then some value, otherwise it gets pulled out, and then it's dot sorted. This is values, this is counts dot values. We already have dot values because we then summed in a filter map. So then we're going to dot sorted dot join, and this is a reference to a car matching against a car, so we shared reference that. Again, when we counts dot get up here, this is gonna be a car, first of all, and it's gonna also need to be a shared reference to a car. So we get this join, we get those values, and then everything else, I think, plays out as expected. So whatever number we have here after we add is going to be it. So to make this pretty easy for ourselves, even though this is not quite amazing, there's something in iter tools that will give us the positions. Is it dot, it's not position, because position just gives us the position. I think it's with position. It always helps if you're looking for something in a particular crate to be looking 
at the crate page and not the official iterator documentation page. So with position will give us this iterator with these additional structs here that tells us whether we're at the first, the middle, or the last value, which is actually super useful for us here. So if we're the last value, we can just add the count of the jokers with position dot map value. And this is a tuple, right? So this is position and that is value. And then if position match position, cause I like that better. If it's last, then it's value plus joker count. If it's anything else, then it's value. Then we join those. Position needs to come in from iter tools. Value probably needs a dereference or something there. I don't have my tests running. Part two, expected use size, found a reference to use size. Yep, that's totally cool with me. And then hand type is not found. I think we need to bring up hand type here because this is the same now, but also card scores is the same. So I think it's just values here, which means that all of this is gonna be the same. So let's get rid of everything here. Let's bring up our brace down here. And this is gonna be let values equals this. And actually what we're gonna do here in this if is return from the if, because ifs are expressions in Rust, the value generations. So it's either gonna be this for the joker counts, or it's gonna be this for the regular cards, and then everything should proceed as normal. The values should be one of these, card scores should be that. I think that's all good. Encountered one should never happen at 56. So that is a single card. Why is a single card getting through though? Let's do debug on values here and see what we're getting out of this. Of course, shared reference because we're using it in another place after that. So we've got one, 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 two, and one. And what hand is this? So in our test, we've got three, two, T three K, which gives us one, 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 two, one, 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 two. Yep. That's accurate. T five, five J five should give us one joker, three of a kind, and we are missing that value. So we're doing something wrong in our joker logic. Iter filter J out. Oh, <laughs> I'm filtering only J's. I need to filter not J's. So we encountered three here. So five, five, five J J. So that's two jokers and three fives. Two jokers and three fives should be, do we not get position last if there's only one? That would be really unfortunate. Let's find out. Returns an iterator adapter that combines each element with a position to ease special case handling of first or last elements. A little bit less information here than I want. Iterator element with position for more information. I think that's what we're running into. Okay, with position is implemented in another file. So we're not gonna see the logic there in the source code. Oh, we've got only. Okay, if there's only, then we don't have, what is position? First, middle, last, only. Okay, that's our problem. I'm not handling only. And if it's the only value, it's value plus joker count, which should give us five for that. Should never happen, encountered empty string. Do I have a new line for something here? Okay, hand J, 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 J. Oh, <laughs> okay. So that's a special case for us. So let's merge these two, first of all. So this is gonna be position last and position only. So this little pipe means that if position last matches or position only matches, then we execute this logic. Really nice. We're turning this into a string. So the issue is if we with position, right? And this whole thing returns an empty string, that means we just have jokers. So we can either early terminate on that or late terminate on that. I think I'm gonna to choose to early cut out on that. So if joker count, is five, then five, else we do this. And this five has to be a string slice or at least a string. Expected string slice found string. We join, so that has to be a string. So the reason this error message here, let me widen this up. The reason this error message says expected string slice found string is because the inference here, or rather expected because of this value here, right? So if and else have incompatible types, both of the arms, so the return values from our if and our elf branches need to be the same type of value. So what happens is when we have this if and our first value is a string slice because it's a string literal, that gets inferred as the correct type for this. And then when we try to return a capital S string, when we join here, that is considered the like wrong type. So because of this type, because they're incompatible, one of them has to be considered the right type and one of them has to be kind of considered the wrong type. In this case, it's just saying you first tried to return a string slice and then you tried to return a capital S string. So for us, that's a super easy fix. We just do two string on our five. Not sure why the comparison, ah, uh, yes, references. So we can dereference joker count. And then it looks like our test just passed. So let's get rid of these debugs because they're no longer necessary. And let's try to run our release for part two. 
and we get a number, hoping it's the right number, always hoping it's the right number, and we get a gold star. So that's the right number. Sweet. So this runs pretty quickly. Let's run the benchmarks anyway. We'll run Devon and Criterion for kicks, basically. Uh, the difference in runtimes is 348 microseconds to 352. So we didn't really do anything extra here. There's not that much happening. So I'm not terribly surprised to see these not being that different. This is always interesting to me. Devon and Criterion do seem to sometimes get different numbers. So like 348 and 352 for the median here, right? And then we've got 414 here and 413. And if we run this again, we get 350 from Devon. And we get 436, it looks like, as well as 434. So I don't know. I It could be that I'm just recording with OBS and that the benchmarks are running in a way that is, you know, being interfered with. But I'm definitely not taking these too seriously. So let's get a DAT profile for day seven, part one. About 300 kilobytes. Part two, about 300 kilobytes. Slightly less, actually, which is kind of interesting. 307, 73. 306.73. So yeah, there you go. I don't think we're going to get much out of a flame graph today, but let's take a look anyway. Yeah, like really nothing here. And this looks like not because there's nothing here, but just because either there's a collection issue or something like that. I did just update my system, so I do need to go back and turn the D-Trace piece of SIP off, but I'll do that soon enough. I'm just trying to not break my computer for these videos. <laughs> So let's take a look at this overall. We don't really use this hand type at all. So I'll just comment that out for now, but I might use it in a refactor or something like that. Don't know how I feel about it yet. Basically the problem is we've got these hands, we've got these bids. We need to score the hands and then sort the hands by score with some tiebreaker. So it's a lot of sorting today and then take the order in which they are and multiply that order by the amount of the bid. So the parsing for this is generally not that complicated. We take each of the lines, we map over each of those lines, we split them by the white space between them to get the hand and the bid. We parse a U32 out of the bid, and then we score the hand. Scoring the hand gives us both the hand, or rather the type of hand, and the full tuple, five element tuple of each of the cards. And it just so happens that if we sort by that tuple, the way that Rust will sort this for us is the correct way because it will use the first element of the tuple, then it will use the second element, and it'll go through that five element tuple. So we don't actually need to implement sorting. We just need to give them in the right way to Rust and Rust will sort it for us. Then we use enumerate to get the index, which we need to add one to because it's zero based, but we need to use one based. Multiply that by the bid and sum it up to get the answer. So the most interesting part here then is score hand. All of this we've either already seen in an earlier video or you can find in the iter tools docs. So sorted by key comes from iter tools and our score hand function takes one of the hands, so five cards and returns a hand type, which is our custom enum, as well as a five element tuple of the number for each card. Our tuple then, or not our tuple, but our hand type is just a variant of each of the types of cards. In this case, I chose to give them each basically these indexes. The other option here is to impl something like from hand type for U8 or something along those lines so that we can convert these to numbers. I chose to take a little bit of a shortcut here because I think it's a little bit fun and we weren't gonna store data in these anyway. Basically, the reason we aren't storing data in these, even though we could, right? We could store each of the hands here is because if I was going to use something like that, I would set it up like this instead, where we had a hand type as a field, and then we had like card scores here as a vec of the U32s. And this is a very common pattern when having a piece of data that is shared amongst a bunch of variants, but we didn't do that quite yet. We did this tuple, which is basically the same thing. It's just unnamed. Interesting thing here is we brought the variants into scope so that we could use them by that name. We take those strings and we iterate over them using cars and we use iter tools to count each of those cars. So it's nice to not have to write that, you know, fiddly fold logic or a for loop or whatever. We take those counts, which is a hash map. So we, if we look at these types, we get hash map from car to U size. So this is the count of each of the car numbers that have appeared. So if there's two ones, then this is a one and that's a two. If it's three A's, then this is an A and that's a three. So we take that, hash map has a values function on it, which gives us all of the values. We want that sorted because we need something to match against. And I found string slices to be the easiest to start with. I then joined those using a 
string slice here. So what we get out of this is a capital S string. That is all of those numbers concatenated together. We can't match on a capital S string. So we need to dereference that to match against string slices, which we can then map from these numbers into the hands. If there's anything that goes wrong here, if we have anything that isn't one of these valid values, we panic, which we saw a couple of times during the video. We got values in part two that didn't fit there because our logic was a little bit off. So we panicked, our program crashed, we got to see the value right at the time that it panicked and we were able to fix it very quickly. So in this kind of case, when we know the data is malformed, great idea to just shut the program down. Now we don't have to panic here. We could return a result, but I chose to panic here. I may go back and write this as a result, but this particular video is getting pretty long anyway. So once we've matched on this hand type, we need to calculate the scores for each of the cards, which is just basically the uh, like car two digit for each of those cars. And then each of these gets their own number. So an ace is worth 14 and whatever, whatever. This is just giving a sorting order and it's giving a sorting order, not by actually sorting, but by mapping to numbers, right? So. At the beginning of the video, we made a decision to not use enums for these values. And if we did use an enum for ace, king, queen, etc., like the card enum, then we would be able to just have that enum and then implement an ordering for that enum. But we took the cheap way out and we converted these to numbers because we don't actually need the values to stick around, which gives us sorting for free. So we collect that and do a tuple using iter tools. This is a not super handy function that I don't use all the time, but it worked out today. It was super useful. So we uh, collect it into a tuple of five elements, which will always work for us because we're always going to have five elements. So we unwrap, but it could fail, which is why it returns an option. So we could have six elements. We could have four elements, etc. And then we return those values and the hand type with the card scores turns out to be everything we need to do just a sort. And we don't have to write the sorting logic here for any of this. We didn't have to write the counting logic. We didn't have to write the sorting logic. We let Rust and Iter tools take care of that for us, which is really nice. Now there's a slight extension for part two. And while I was writing the part two, basically score hand is the only place where we had changes. So a really important change is that a joker in a single card slot for the sorting purposes for that five element tuple is worth one. And otherwise, if my scroll will cooperate, ooh, Otherwise, if we have jokers, we need to add them to basically our highest card position, it turns out. So if you have five jokers, then we just have five here, right? And that's going to come through and that's going to give us five of a kind because five jokers is five of a kind. Why? What else would it be? Otherwise, we need to iterate over our counts, filter out the jokers, sort the rest of the values. And then we use with position from iter tools again to determine whether we are in the last position, which is our highest card count, or if it's the only number, in which case we only have one set of cards. So if it's only, that means we only have like three aces or two aces or four kings or something like that. If it's last, that means we have multiple types of cards and the last card is going to be the one that is going to make us into a more valuable hand. Otherwise, we just return the value. We join all that together and do the same logic we did before. So a quick look at the leaderboard before we wrap up today. We've got looking for an internship, DeFello and Siegfried again. Really just killing it at the top of the top of the leaderboard here. Top three pretty consistently with a Greg Manning in a pretty close fourth. I recognize a bunch of these names from the comment sections from the Discord. So it's good to see you all around, both hanging out in the video comments, hanging out in the Discord, helping each other. Love seeing that. I would say we've got about 40 people working on today right now and a bunch of people have already done part one and part two which is great and here's our local leaderboard if you're interested in that this score is determined by how fast you get onto the leaderboard i believe in what position basically so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions as usual leave them in the comments and i'll see you in the next one have a great rest of your night